Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be covering an LA Chargers mock draft. This is going to be a seven-round mock. And what's really exciting about this Chargers team is that they have a great core. Um, they have a lot of money heading into free agency. There's a lot of different things that this team can really do. And you look at some of the, the guys that are really important in the offseason to retain, one of them being Mike Williams, uh, a receiver that really, really emerged, especially at the start of the season, came on as of late as well. There's a lot to really build on with him and Justin Herbert. So hopefully they can get uh, an extension done with him at some point. It's really critical that they hold on to Mike Williams. But this draft allows for a huge opportunity for the Chargers to really convert and make that next step to get into the postseason. They were oh so close. Uh, obviously, that, that loss to the Raiders really hurt. However, they are on the right track. And if we kind of look at what is available for this Chargers team, I think there's a couple of things that I do want to highlight in terms of their, their weaknesses. I really look to that tackle spot, especially the right tackle spot. Um, Rashawn Slater was really good at that left tackle spot, but Storm Norton not conducive as a starter in this league. That's really concerning to me. I think they are going to immediately upgrade that spot. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is available at the tackle spot for our selection. Now, there's a couple of names that could be interesting, Trevor Penning being one of them. Nicholas Pettit Freer. So, you know, I, I don't absolutely love the players that are on the board currently for that spot. Looking around that, um, you can also look at the corner spot. I, I think that is uh, something that is actually kind of noteworthy. I mean, you look at Chris Harris Jr. being in his contract season, I think it really makes sense for them to address that corner spot once again. They drafted Asante Samuel, he's been an absolute stud for them. And I think if you complement that selection by taking a guy like Ahmad Gardner, that makes a lot of sense to me. You have two really, really good young corners that can be the foundation for that defense. I mean, they already have really nice pieces and guys like Joey Bosa on that side of the ball. However, they can continue to address that. They already have Derwin James as well in that secondary. So that could be really, really scary for teams, uh, you know, heading forward in the future. So I'm actually going to go ahead and select Ahmad Gardner. I'd like that pick. I, I think that's a game changer on that, on the defensive side of the football. Um, a, a true shutdown corner at the college level did not allow a single touchdown uh, this past season. So he's been super consistent, really, really good all year long. And I think it really makes sense for the Chargers. And as we get to pick 48, this is where things get kind of interesting because you can take the selection a number of different ways. Uh, to me, I also think a priority should be looking at that tight end spot. I would like to you know, upgrade over a Jared Cook. Um, obviously, he continues to age. And there's a guy that was extremely productive at Colorado State that did not get a lot of uh, recogni recognition um, you know, nationwide. That's Trey McBride, a guy that had 1,000 yards quietly. Uh, nobody really seemed to notice that at all. So he is definitely right there for me. I'm thinking about Trey McBride. A um, couple of other spots that you could look. You know, We do have that tackle selection that we could make. I like a selection uh, of Daniel Felele. I mean, he's 6'9", 400 pounds, really, really terrific in the run game. And, you know, in pass protection, he's going to continue to get better. He'll probably drop a little bit of weight, but I mean, he has the ideal, ideal, ideal frame for a tackle. Uh, you know, I it just, it, it's really tough. You don't find these kind of multiple projects here at this spot that, you know, really have some, some all pro upside, just considering, you know, what his frame is and what he can become. Um, you know, that's a very, very, uh, that's like best case scenario. However, um, you got to think optimistically if you are the Chargers. Uh, I think Daniel Falele could solve a huge issue at the right tackle spot. So I'm comfortable actually selecting him with that pick uh, 48. So to me, you go ahead and address that tackle spot. You go ahead and address the, the corner spot, which to me is a need heading, heading into the offseason, especially when you're in a division competing against Patrick Mahomes. It's really, really crucial to have great corner play. And that's what Amar, Ahmad Gardner can bring. And also we, we come back, we get Daniel Felele and you're now sitting at pick 79. So there's a, a number of options that you have at this spot. Um, to me, you, you, you should look at that, that tight end spot. Also, let's look on the interior D line. Um, you know, I'm not loving what we have value wise at this point. Um, you could definitely look at a guy like Haskell Garrett, um, I don't love it, though, to be completely transparent with you guys. I, I think we have to look at that tight end spot. It's really tough to me 
to go past this without coming out with a tight end. Isaiah likely is a guy that's been, once again, extremely underrated this whole season. Um, Coastal Carolina does not get a, a lot of love nationally. Um, they It's been getting better as, as their program continues to improve, but Isaiah likely could really fit in to this Chargers culture. I think that he'd be a really good fit long-term um, as a tight end for Justin Herbert. Um, you know, they have some other project tight ends on the roster as well, but I think you have to add another guy into that grouping and, and really try to elevate the, the tight end room in general. Isaiah likely is going to be my selection. I love this for the Chargers. Justin Herbert's going to get a consistent, consistent, consistent guy at that tight end spot. I mean, they're all their offense is already very, very talented, but you know, tight ends a spot that I think they can make some, some you know, overall improvements on. I definitely thought about taking that in the second round. Uh, it was tough not to. And now we're getting to pick 119. So this is when you have to start considering um, looking along that offensive line. To me, there's a couple of guys that you could look to. I mean, Alec Lindstrom, to me, makes a lot of sense. You know, Michael Schofield had up and down all year long. Um, you know, Matt Filer's another guy that had a pretty strong season at that guard spot. But to me, I'd look to, you know, potentially replace Schofield at this point. Um, I think Alec Lindstrom's a, a perfect example of a guy that can be a consistent starter in this league for a long time. Uh, very, very consistent on, on, you know, every single game. You know what you're getting from a guy like Alec Lindstrom. So bringing him into the Chargers fold on the offensive line, a uh, team that generally is riddled with injuries. To me, this makes a lot of sense. I, I think that you have to be, you know, sure up front. Uh, we addressed that already. I'm going to do it again because it, it's wise to invest in an offensive line when you have a franchise quarterback in Justin Herbert and you want to give him all the tools to succeed. I'm going to go ahead and select Alec Lindstrom. I love this selection. I was surprised that he was still here for the Chargers selection. So absolutely huge that we could get him here in the fourth round. Uh, it's very possible when the, the real thing happens, he, he could be a third round selection. So maybe, you know, good value at that spot. And, you know, with our next pick, we have to really be considering a couple of things. Um, nose tackles, one that I want to look at. I, I don't know if we necessarily have uh, a guy that can be a producer right away. Um, you know, we, we will come back to that, though. I'm also looking for another depth wide receiver. Justin Ross is still available. That could be an interesting name to bring in potentially. So definitely keeping that in mind. Um, you know, another rotational edge never really hurt. Um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I'm going to go with Ali Gay. I, I think the product from LSU showed a lot this season. Uh, one of the leaders on that LSU defense um, can really get after the quarterback rotational guy, uh, maybe can, can turn into a, a true starter, um, you know, within, within a season or two. And I think that's kind of the multiple traits. He has those multiple traits that you want in a, in a defensive end. So I'm going to go ahead and select Ali Gay from LSU. Uh, could be a good pick for them. You know, this late in the draft, you, you have to take some chances on guys. Once again, I'm surprised he was still there. I Truthfully, I am still surprised. Um, yeah, I really liked what we've done with our picks so far. To me, I, I think we've done very, very well addressing the key needs for this roster. And if we look now, I pick 194. Uh, we have another opportunity to, to, you know, get some running back depth. I don't think that's necessarily a need at this point um, for this roster. Could get a, a depth linebacker. Um, and Ellis Brooks could be a really, really good option. Our Mark Hall, or Marquan McCall from Kentucky. I think he could be a contributor right away for this team, especially on that interior, that defensive line, which is something that this team desperately needs. Um, I'm going to go with McCall here at this spot, a uh, good developmental player. I think he can step in and have a role for this Chargers team uh, when it comes to his rookie season. And honestly, I, you really have to throw some darts at some of these guys here, uh, take chances. And once again, we do have pick 215. So a little bit of flexibility. Uh, to me, I'm thinking about uh, potentially addressing that, that linebacker spot. Another depth linebacker wouldn't hurt. Uh, Merlin Robertson. Let's see who else is on that linebacker room. Uh, once again, uh, Ellis Brooks is still here. Really tough to pass up on a guy like Ellis Brooks at this point in the draft. Um, I think it would be wise to select him here. 
just considering, yeah, I, I mean, depth wise, it makes way too much sense to go ahead and select a, a guy like Ellis Brooks. Um, this Chargers draft has come along very, very nicely. I'm happy with some of the guys that have fallen to us. Maybe that shouldn't have. Um, and now we're at pick 232. Uh, you come to the point where you, you can look another offensive lineman, potentially maybe a wide receiver, maybe another corner. Yeah, I honestly, I, I like the Ontario drum and I think the value in this pick is really, really good. I know the Chargers have some guys on the roster that have really stepped up as of late. Um, you know, Jalen Guyton being one of those guys, um, you know, Josh Palmer as well. I'm going to go ahead and take the Ontario drum. And I think he's being extremely undervalued, talented playmaker. And the fact that he is still a seventh round selection is absolutely insane to me. So once again, we're doing really great with the value. I, I always hit home on that. Um, sometimes, you know, positional need can go by the wayside when there's a lot, when there is talent on the board. Now it's really good with some of these selections because we have an opportunity with these picks to really, really uh, create some depth at this spot. Um, to me, I, I, I could see the value in bringing in another corner. Um, Dejon Warren from Jackson state, a prospect that's really come on as of late in terms of in the draft community, I'm going to go ahead and select him at the corner spot. I think that makes some sense for us. And then we have another selection right here. And to me, I, I want to look another edge. You see a Christopher Allen on there. Uh, uh, let's see Trajan Jeff coat or Ben still. I, I think I'm going to go with Trajan Jeffcoat. Uh, once again, I'd like to have some more rotational pass rushers, and that's kind of what he feels the need of. Um, and then finally here, I, I think we could look at Josh Proctor. I, I love the fact that Josh Proctor is still here. Um, a guy that, you know, doesn't get a lot of recognition, but, I mean, he was an important piece to that Ohio State defense. So I'm going to go ahead and select Josh Proctor. Good depth safety. Honestly, you can't go wrong in that situation. So we're going to go ahead – and review what picks we just had. Um, to me, Ahmad Gardner, huge selection for them. Some people may not agree with taking a corner in that first round if you are the Chargers. Maybe you would prefer offensive line. Maybe you would be looking at that interior defensive line as well at that spot. But I like Ahmad Gardner as a prospect. It's tough to pass on him. Daniel Felele is my other selection now Then in that second round. Um, big, moldable project, 6'9", 400 pounds. Uh, uh, an object that's nearly immovable, uh, very, very tough to get by him, super strong as well. And then you have Isaiah Likely from Coastal Carolina. You're getting a tight end into that tight end room that definitely needs uh, another playmaker. I think that's what he can bring to this Chargers team. Really unsure of Jared Cook's future with the team. Alec Lindstrom, I love this selection at 119. Once again, this is where we start to preach and value the next two picks for sure. Um, Lindstrom can be an immediate impact player, very well could be a starter day one, and that's good value at pick 119. Uh, Ali Gaith from LSU, uh, once, once again, I said one of, the, one of the big leaders on that LSU defense, and I think that you have to bring in another pass rusher as well. Uh, Marquand McCall from Kentucky, you, you got to get an interior presence as well. You got Ellis Brooks, Ontario Drummond, uh, Dejon Warren, uh, Trahan, Jeff Coat. And then Josh Proctor, I think, one, is actually one of the steals of the draft here, getting him at 254. Um, once again, could be a guy that steps in and is a, is a starter, low-end starter um, at some point. But the fact that you can get a guy like that in the seventh round is absolutely huge. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We really do appreciate you guys watching our content. Had a lot of fun recording this Chargers mock draft. Let me know in the comment section below what team should we do next for these team mocks. I appreciate you all, and we'll see you in the next video.